So before we start with this video, a serious announcement. When you start playing with lasers, please protect your eyes. When using liquids or refraction and lasers, please be careful. Now let's roll the video. Welcome to Keller's Coder. Today we're going to make some uh, Ghostbusters props, some prop slime for these uh, test tubes and a portable laser containment unit that could be straight out of the Ghostbusters universe with lasers controlled by a Commodore 64. I mean, more period accurate than that, you don't get it, right? Motherfucker! So I've been a Ghostbusters fan since the first hour. And recently Afterlife came out and I really enjoyed it and I figured we need to make some Ghostbusters uh, props. Now usually Ghostbusters slime is made with this stuff. Methyl cellulose. That is what Bill Murray gets all over him all the time. Uh, methyl cellulose or the brand name is Methacel is basically a food thickening agent and it's used in Hollywood in special effects since the dawn of special effects. Uh, for example, the Battle of Mustafar in Star Wars, the lava in the miniature is made with this stuff lit underneath. Terminator 2, the molten metal coming from these kettles, is made with this stuff. It is used all over the place. Now, it is a food-based agent, so you can actually ingest it. You can get it in your mouth. And you will be fine. However, mm, it does spoil. So if you make these test tubes that will sit in your cupboard in a nice little case with some EL wire around it, still something I want to make. The stuff is on the way from China. Um, they will go bad. They will go moldy eventually. So these slimes we will just make from kids glue and some eye drops to not let them go hard. Now, in case of man of Ghostbusters age, things don't go hard. It's just to do with age. So here's our best friend, children glue, which is uh, safe. And we just mix up as much as we need slime. And then our next thing. Now our other best friends, food coloring. These are a neon green and neon pink. And they are the closest thing to the real thing that uh, I could find here in the Netherlands. And they are relatively expensive, like four dollars a piece, but they last forever. Because you only need this much, one little drop to color a whole batch. I wasted more on the stick than I needed. Now the next stuff to bind some polymers is lens fluid or borax. Uh, if you use lens fluid, use the one that says buffered solution. That is the only one that contains borax to bind it and make it a bit more stringy. In this case, it will also prevent it from going hard. You can even leave it in the air and it won't go hard. Just like other things when you're past 40. Maybe there was too much borax in the detergent that cleaned our underwear when we were kids. I purposely use these very, very cheap plastic bowls because you can fold them much like a funnel and that way you can uh, deposit your slime in a test tube. And that, dear teenagers, is how you make money. Now let's adore our tubes with some embossed labels. You can't get any more retro than that. And some vinyl stickers. Now I don't have a vinyl sticker printer, so I use this HP Sprocket with a sticky backed photo paper. And there you go. I created my own labels that look like vinyl. Looks like a vinyl sticker. Now these labels didn't stick to glass very well, so I added a bit of uh, super glue and we stuck them on there. Super glue is what holds our industry together. And look at that. There we go. We got some psycho magnetic slime and some class 5 slime. And yes, I realized I put the labels on the wrong bottles, so I swapped the fluids around later on. So now for the portable laser containment unit. I have a vase with water and a scattering agent in there and a little base that I put the lasers into and this board on. Now this little base is just from a robot 
and it had the slots cut in in the right places. I was like, I can work with this. There's no need to make things new. Now let us first have a look at this little board that are now uh, vandalized, taken out the LED bar and put in some headers uh, to know what it actually does. Now we need something to drive these LEDs. And this is a board that I created many, many years ago. I think this is even the third iteration. And I use a 541 latching driver. So each pin can drive a whopping 25 milliamps, which is enough to drive these LEDs, which are usually 10 LED bars, which I've taken out and put in headers for this solution to connect the lasers to. Now this resistor array, I ended up shorting at the rear because the 220 ohms that there's currently in here in series with the resistor that is already on this laser made the laser too faint to actually draw a nice little line in our water with the scattering agent. So I basically just shorted them. Now here we have PA2, which is an inverter based around a uh, single transistor which selects the upper or the lower uh, 8 bits because these latches actually latch the value so you can drive 16 values but we currently only use the upper one because we only have place for 8 LEDs but you can drive 16 if you like that is the cool thing about this design so this is all attached these are signals from the user port but you can use of course any other uh, means to driving this, uh, a Pipico for example. Now the power supply is center negative because I have a lot of these Sennheiser power adapters laying around that are that way. So if you want to use center positive, which is more standard in my opinion, then you need to swap around these two wires or the whole barrel jack. The diode in the air protects uh, against negative voltage and we use the trusty 7805 to create the 5 volts. It's an old design, like I said. But it works and it will drive our laser LEDs with enough current to actually uh, light up the fluid. But how do we actually draw these lines in this fluid? Well, we call it a scatter agent. And the scattering agent is milk. Not man milk, cow milk. And we literally only need a couple of drops. Look at that. Because you don't want the fluid to go opaque. And we just stir it in there. Now you need to, of course, change this out every now and then. Because it will go a bit smelly, probably. But look at that. Let's put on our laser containment. And we got lines being drawn. Only because we sprayed in some milk. Now, if you want this on display, you can actually use something that's called titanium dioxide. It's the same stuff that they used to put into a toothpaste to make it white. Now, it turns out that it is carcinogenic. So in Europe, they've taken it out of circulation. So it's not as easy to find. Although I found places that still sell what is left. But look at that. This looks awesome. So the pattern of the lasers is programmed with this little program that I wrote that specifically works for my little board that has 16 bits because we have one transistor that actually selects between those two buffered latches. And basically what it does, does is we can enter 256 rows of 16 zeros and ones and it will just play them off in turn. So if we do R, we reset it. You can see it is off. So if we say five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, seven, eight, boop, all the lasers go on. If we then do this, it will actually play it twice. We can actually make it blink. Right, we can uh, do this. So you see and you can if we do uh, equals this is the normal speed so it really pulses really really quickly and with the minus button if you press it 
and it will actually slow it down to about one frame a second, so 20 milliseconds. So if you want more than 20 milliseconds, you just repeat that line. So the link is in the description for here, but let's also program this just using pokes, because we can actually do that. So first, line 10, we need to set the uh, PB0 to PB7 ports as outputs. So there's 56579, 255 means all the bits are set to an output. Then we count from 0 to 7, Y will become apparent in this line. Because here in 56577 we write to the user port. And we write the value 2 to the power of i. So uh, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, etc. So we're basically setting one bit on at a time, scanning from the least significant bit to the most significant bit. Uh, this is just a little uh, weight loop, because even without it, it's too fast and basic. Here we just print the values for your convenience, the next, and we just uh, continue looping forever. So if we run that, you will see the numbers, and if we go to the laser containment unit, you will see the laser spinning around. So depending on the number that you put in, 56577, seven, these lights light up in a different bit pattern. And let me show you how fast it is without the weight. Let me take out the print. There we go. And now it should be really fast. So this is the max speed that basically can actually uh, pulse this with that exponent in there. So it's still uh, quite a bit faster than you would want, right? So we just put back the 54j equals 0 to 20, colon, next. And it's a more decent speed. So controlling the user port is really, really simple. You set the pins to an output, and you just poke to a 56577. That's as easy as it gets. And then you can light up any pattern that you want. Now, in case if you use actually my little doohickey here, then there is one bit that you need to toggle on or off to select whether you want the lower 8 bits or the upper 8 bits. Currently, if you don't do that, you always select the lower 8 bits. That's the way how the hardware is set up. If you want to access the upper 8 bits, you have to toggle that pin. But yeah, there you go. So there you have it. We created a couple of nice looking non-perishable slime props from the Ghostbusters universe. We learned that you can actually use your photo printer with sticky paper uh, to create nice looking vinyl like labels if you don't have the right stickers. So there you have it. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And of course, our portable laser containment unit with lasers and the Raleigh scattering demonstration. It's really, really cool. And the scattering agent in this case is just man milk. Uh, cow milk. Yeah, and it really fits nicely in the Ghostbusters universe. Now this little doohickey on top I basically created back in 1989 for computer glass to demonstrate uh, pulsing LEDs. Back then it was just eight transistors and eight green LEDs and now it's uh, two latches, buffered latches with uh, lasers progression. But yeah, this is really, really nice. So I hope you learned something in the retro universe of prop making and see you in the next one.